1901, I think it was, the U.S. Department of Agriculture would come out with a yearbook of agriculture. And uh, at that year, they, they estimated the prairie dogs occupied something like 63 million acres of uh, land in, uh, in the United States. And in, in a few years later, in 1905, a guy named Vernon Bailey, who was a, a chief naturalist for the, for the U.S. Biological Survey, said that he found a prairie dog town that, that stretched from the uh, Concho River in San Angelo all the way to Clarendon, Texas. And so that's, you know, it's a 250 mile long prairie dog town. But at the time they were quoting that prairie dogs reduced the productivity in the same, during this early 20th century, the federal government was reporting that prairie dogs reduced the productivity of rangelands from 50 to 75%. And, you know, so that kind of simmered. And then uh, by the 1930s, the federal government started sponsoring ranchers to poison prairie dog towns and try to just eliminate them from the plains. And that's, it's kind of during that 1930s. And that, you know, that happens to coincide with the greatest man-made ecological disaster our country's ever seen. And that's the dust bowl because of improper farming practices. So you've got this double whammy of poor farming practices and, and, that were that were government sponsored and government supported, and then you've got this ecological disaster from a lot, wildlife standpoint that we're going to go put out poison and poison out all these prairie dog towns of this ecosystem. I mean, that's it's during during probably and my my dates may be off a little bit, but probably from the 30s until the 60s is when the the prairie dog the numbers really really collapsed in the country. <laughs> 